All right, guys, we are on lesson four. So uh, I am Sean Cheek of webpianoteacher.com. We're doing my sight reading boot camp series, a hundred lesson series to jumpstart you into good sight reading habits so that you get good at the skill of reading, not good at one song, <laughs> not, uh, you know, where you can play one thing that's really hard, but it took you two years and now you can move on to the next thing that's really hard. That's no fun. Uh, when you could play hundreds of songs that aren't that hard uh, and get better at that skill so that you can play more music and learn it faster. Let me tell you, it's it's just your gateway. And the wider that gateway is, the better that you sight read, the more information you're going to be able to get in quicker, the more you're going to be able to play something that's, uh, you know, play more music, play more music faster to to learn it faster. Because you can read it faster. You can read it better. That's a, that's a skill you learn, okay, that, that you apply to everything you play. Okay, how good you are at music isn't determined by how well you play one hard song, okay? We want to learn to be a musician. And so part of being a musician is learning to read well. Part of that is keyboard awareness of knowing where you are on the keyboard without looking at your hands. Every time you look down at your hands, you take your eyes off of here, you break the chain, you break the line of thought, the consciousness that you have going with the music. It gets interrupted. You you have to uh, learn to play without looking at your hands, okay? Even where you might make a mistake, but then you can fix it and keep going without looking down, ever. Um, there are very few times when I when I look down for something where it's a, that's a big hop or something. Uh, but sometimes even then I'll just go for it without looking. You can get good at that, okay? Um, how how quickly you see what's on the, see patterns and scales and chords. There's only so many scales and chords, and they're just repackaged in every song, whether you're playing Bach or, uh, you know, the Foo Fighters. <laughs> I just thought of two, uh, you know, opposite end things, who I love very much, both of those uh, types of music. Um yeah, you get good at that skill. And so that's what we're doing here. The magic is what I'm telling you and how to practice, not the not the piece I wrote here, okay? So work on this skill. Here we go. There's my little speech. Lesson four. All right, voice is holding out. Had tracheitis for a couple of months, and uh, that was awful. Now I can finally talk again. Uh, I'll be able to sing eventually, but I can't push it yet. Got to wait till, till it's time for that. All right, so... Lesson four, C position, hands together. So on this one, we're going to be playing more hands together uh, than we have been before. We kind of did that a little bit in lesson three. We're going to do it more here. Um, have you played lessons one, two, and three already? Okay, whenever you sit down, don't start with me with lesson four until you've played lesson one, two, and three today. You may say, oh, I did it yesterday. Not good enough. Do it today. Every day, every time you sit down, you, you, and you say, I'm doing lesson four. Well, play lessons one, two, and three first. Then you get to four. And actually, you can you can also get to where you work on the new one first while your brain is fresh. But make sure you also play the, the old ones as well every time. And when you play the old ones, though they're starting to be memorized, look at the note you're playing. Don't stop looking at it. Don't start daydreaming and looking through the sheet and just not seeing anything and playing from memory. Then you're not doing anything. Actually look at the note and actually say the name of it out loud. We're not, we're going to get to a point where you don't have to say them out loud anymore, um, but we're not there yet. Okay. Um, have you played your other three songs? Have you done your flashcards, whether you use an app or your note cards? Do those. Now we're ready. Okay. So, as you look at this, I want you to try the first line. See if you can play it and say the notes out loud without guessing, without counting up, without looking at your hands. Okay, hit pause, and then now you're back. All right, so let's see if you got it right. At the top we have C, C, E, E, G, G, E, F, F, I just stop there because that's the first line. That's a good, good way to do it. Try one line. Okay, and the reason I have you play it first, because if I play it first, you're going to use your ear, and you're just going to play it by ear, and you're going you're gonna to know where the note is because, you know, you can hear it, and you can just, you know, do it that way. Um, some of the worst sight readers in the world 
are the people who have the best ears in the world because they tend to use that ear so they don't read. They don't have to. There comes a time where that runs out and it, and it actually doesn't work anymore. The music gets too complicated. But uh, to play it without me first. See if you can name those notes, okay? All right, so work on that first line. We know enough at this point where you can practice yourself. Say it and play it. Uh, let's try the second line now. And you say, what is, what is that? I recognize that. That is uh, Haydn's Surprise Symphony. <laughs> so, sort of. Okay. So, here we are. G, G, E, left hand, F, F, D, D, 1, and a 2, and 3, and 4. So, we counted there. Real quick, little review. What are the five lines in four spaces called? Staff. We have a bass staff, a treble staff. This is the bass clef. Other sign is the treble clef. Um, it's also called, this one is called an F clef because the little curly Q thing is on the F line telling us where F is. And that's our, our, our judgment, where the notes are. Because different um, instruments would have different pitch ranges and you would have a different staff according to where uh, the range was so that most of the notes were on the staff and not way above it or way below it. So you'd have you know a middle range there. That's why they have clefs. The treble uh Treble clef is also called the G clef because the little curly Q in the middle would, would actually go around the G line, uh, denoting that that's a G, okay? All right, so this is a brace. This is a bar line. Uh, we have a measure, right? E each uh, bar line separates the measures of the song. We have four counts of measure. I did not put 4-4 four, four in all these, but I should have. <clears throat> in fact, you can write that in if you want. There you go. Um, okay, so now we're to this part right here. So we have uh, octaves again, where the notes are the same, okay? The letters, C, E, G. The fingers aren't the same, okay? So you're playing your thumb and your pinky at the same time, your one and your five finger. Remember the finger numbers? One, two, three, four, five. Don't forget that. One, two, three, four, five. You know why I don't use finger numbers a lot? Because... If I wrote the finger numbers in, you would just play the numbers and you would not think of the notes. You would just make the numbers. <laughs> I know all the tricks because I did them. And uh, the kids I taught and the adults I taught did that too. They just followed the finger numbers. So I said, well, no more finger numbers. You just know the name of the note. Okay? So, it, you know, instead of putting one, one, three, three, five, five, I'm not doing that. You know the note, notes. C, C, E, E, G, G, E, F. Good. Here we go. E E C C C E E G G E F F C C C. Now that might take you a while. So it it depending on who you are, um, has nothing to do with you know talent. Uh, you may have a lot of trouble playing both hands at the same time. You may just jump right in and be, it'd be easy. Um. But even if you have some trouble, I think you'll get over the hump after you just do it a little bit. You'll get the, the feel for playing uh, both hands at the same time. But we need to get that feeling for right from the get-go of both hands playing together, okay, in unison. All right. Um, so I'm going to play the whole song in just a minute. Um, but make sure you've done your flashcards. Make sure you play Lessons 1, 2, and 3 today. Not just yesterday or or, early, or even earlier in the day. Play them again. Every time you sit down, play all, everything that you know. Say it and play it. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, and go. F. scroll one line to go ready three four three four f f b e c c c e very nice okay um so we have 
Um, that's lesson four. We'll go to lesson five in the next one, okay? So practice. How long should you practice? Well, in the beginning, a couple of minutes a day is fine. Every sitting. Uh, as you get going further, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, especially when you have more lessons to play. When you get to lesson 10 and you have to play all the, the nine first, um, you know, it's going to take longer. And that's okay. And it, and it still isn't going to be even near 30 minutes. Uh, but it's better to practice maybe, you know, several times throughout the day in short spurts instead of trying to sit down for one long marathon. Okay, that's usually the best thing, I think, in the beginning uh, is is more, more frequent than uh, a long session. Okay, I'll see you in lesson five. And all right.